part one last week, is it God's will to heal? All right? And we, first of all, conclude that biblical scholars believe that these verses, in fact, we conclude that these verses, not just what biblical scholars say, all right, but we observe for ourselves when we looked at all the scriptures, that these verses are speaking about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Isaiah is prophesying concerning Christ's death on the cross. Hallelujah. He's speaking about the death and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This passage acknowledges that Jesus, number one, that Jesus Christ paid the price for our sin. He shed his blood on that cross for our sin, to redeem us from sin. Hallelujah. To bring regeneration, to bring salvation. Hallelujah. He shed his blood on the cross that we might be saved. Secondly, that Jesus' body was broken for our healing. Hallelujah. So the blood was shed for our salvation, was to be born, and his body was broken for our healing. That's why at communion, we talk about the blood, drink this, his blood that was shed for us, and then eat this, his body which was broken for us. Two things happened on the cross. He paid the price for our sin, and he also um, died, his body was beaten and bruised, battered, whatever, for our healing. Hallelujah. Thank God. We look at the Hebrew word for the word born, showing a born of which they established that that word born not to means to bear away or to remove to a distance something. All right? To remove to a distance, suffering punishment for something. Christ has removed to a distance our griefs. All right? He removed to a distance. He suffered punishment for our griefs. Hallelujah. We look at that. And we establish that. Um, we look at some scripture verses. We're just going to read one of them. Um, we look at chapter 5, verse 1. Let your soul sing and hear the voice of spirit, and as a witness whether he have seen or known of it. If he do not, if he do not um, utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. See the word bear is again, bear. That's a, it carries the idea of bearing something. Alright? Hallelujah. So Jesus bore and carried our sorrows. I'm uh, sorry, our griefs. He bore our griefs and he carried our sorrows. He bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. He bore our griefs. Hallelujah. There's some other texts, but we're not going to go through them right now. We can go back and look at the, um, the previous video that's from last week. Hallelujah. But we realize here that in Genesis 53, verse 12, that the same, the very same verb used of bearing our sins is also used in Genesis 53, verse 4, of bearing our griefs. In other words, the same day that Jesus bore our griefs, he bore our sin. Our sin, he bore our sin, he bore our griefs. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We see the word for grief is the word cool there, which means sickness. It comes from the Hebrew word child, which means to be weak, sick, or afflicted. This is talking about physical sickness. Hallelujah. Physical sickness. Sickness and disease within our body. Surely you have born our griefs. All right, he's kept removed to a distance or grace, removed to a distance or sicknesses and our diseases. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We looked at a text in um, it is Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy. Um, it talks about um, in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 15. And the Lord will take away from the all sickness. That's the word here. Again, call it. The Lord shall take away from the all sickness. And put none of these evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest upon thee, but we lay, lay them upon all that hate thee. Hallelujah. So we see that God uh, uh, has born, uh, uh, born our sicknesses. Hallelujah. He born our sicknesses. Deuteronomy 28, verse 61. You see the word for sickness there. Verse 61 says that also every sickness and every plague is now written in the book of the law. Then the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So we see the word cool in there means sickness. And there are a lot of other words, other scriptures that show that the word cool in, uh, 1 Kings 17, 17, uh, 2 Kings 1, 2, and 2 Kings 8, verse 8. The word is trying to disease in those uh, patterns of scripture. Hallelujah. But you can look back at last week's uh, lesson and you'll see those scriptures, those verses. Hallelujah. We talked about them in, in detail. 2 Kings 8, 8, and 8, you see. Praise the Lord. So, the next word we're looking at is that word carry. He's born our sicknesses. He's removed to a distance our sicknesses. He suffered penalty for our 
our sicknesses. I know he's carried, the word carried is say about, which means to bear something as a penalty or chastisement. All right? Lamentations 5, verse 7. Our fathers have sinned and are not, and we have borne their iniquities. We have borne their iniquities. So Jesus have carried, borne our, 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 our sorrows. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, Isaiah 53, verse 11, and he shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his love, by his mother shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. He carried our sorrows. Hallelujah. He bore our sorrows. Hallelujah. That word carry also means to bear. Hallelujah. And the word for sorrows is that word makko, which means pain. Alright? Pain, pain, pain. Sorrows is the Hebrew word makko, let's try it. Pain. Job chapter 14, verse 22, and verse 30, and chapter 33, verse 19. Hallelujah. Job 40, 22. But his flesh upon him shall have pain. The word makko there. And his soul within him shall mourn. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then we see Job 33, verse 19. It says, He is chastened also that pain upon his back and the multitude of his bones with strong pain. All right? So let me put that all together. We realize that Christ bore our pains, the same day he bore our sicknesses and our diseases. He bore them in his body. He suffered punishment for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was our substitute. He bore it vicariously. Vicariously. Hallelujah. So we want to thank God for Jesus. Now some people believe that these scriptures are just talking about spiritual healing. Alright? But this word, this, this, this verse is talking about healing for the physical body. Sickness and disease. Hallelujah. Physical ailments. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are these two words expressing the servant taking of their burdens on the shoulder? That's a symbol. The former implies not only the taking of it, but the bearing of, bearing of it away. Alright? So, Christ not only took upon him your sin or your sickness and diseases, but he bore it away. He, he removed them to a distance. Amen. So that you would be free. Christians have a right to walk in divine health. Amen. They have a right to walk in divine health. Am I being super spiritual? Am I saying the devil will not attack our body? I'm not going to be the least body, the devil will not attack us. But you don't have to welcome him. You don't have to accept him. You don't have to receive what he's sending you. We are bringing upon your body. Amen. Hallelujah. Likewise, when somebody knocks at your house, you have a room in the city. You can't stop them from knocking at the house or calling out, but you can stop them from coming into your house. Amen. You can live with them. Hallelujah. You can resist them. So likewise, when the devil attacks you with that faith, you can resist them. Amen. Resist them. You don't have to allow him. To, to, re, to re have up in your body. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So then it says, and we get that again, of these two words expressing the servants taking their burden on his shoulders. And we get of these two words expressing the servants taking their burden on his shoulders, which is Nasa and Sebab, the former implies not only taking of it, but bearing it away. The latter emphasizes the lid of the Lord. Sebab, um, Emphasizes the lip of the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to thank God for Jesus this morning. We want to thank God for Jesus. Is it God's good to heal? Is it God's good to heal? That's the question. I said I cannot ask that question for you. That first point was, it is, I had to ask, it, it is God's good to heal. But I want to determine that for yourself. I want to establish that for yourself. I want to come to your own conclusion according to what the word of God says. Is it God's will to heal? And I said yes, yeah, um, last Sunday, and in fact, yes, it is God's will to heal. Is it God's will to heal you? Yes. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We've come to realize that healing is part of the atonement. It is part of the atonement. Hallelujah. Salvation and healing are all part and parcel of the same message. I don't know how many times I said that last week. Salvation and healing are part and parcel of the same package. He can not only die for your sin, the same verse says that by his stretching are healed. All is one big package. 
salvation or regeneration and healing. Not one without the other. Both in a bloodshed for your salvation or your regeneration. Hallelujah. Body broken that you might be healed. Why do you just believe one part of the verse? Everybody believes that Christ died for the sins of everyone. Of humanity, of every single man, black, white, yellow, pink, Muslim, Jew, uh, Al Qaeda, Hezbollah, all the extremist group. Christ died for every single person. Oh, is it? You only pray for the Jews and not for those people who are attacking the Jews. I mean, the prayer for everybody for Christ. But say that He's not willing that any perish, but all will come to repentance. He is it that He is. He wants everybody to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. That's what the word of God says. Nobody is left out. Likewise, nobody is left out when it comes to healing. God wants to heal all. Amen. Amen. But do we believe? Do we believe the word? Hallelujah. I believe it's God's word to heal. God's will to heal. Hallelujah. As you see from the word. Surely that what? Born our griefs and carry our pains. There's another transition, the young transition, shortly, or sicknesses he had born. Young transition, he was a, 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 a Hebrew scholar with all the Hebrew race. And he says, surely our sicknesses, this is a transition of the verse, surely our sicknesses he had born and our pains he carried them. Read that again. Surely our sicknesses he had born and our pains he had carried them. Christ carried your pains. Christ bore your sicknesses. He did it for you. He took your place. He took your sickness on that cross. Amen. So that you will have to carry them. That's what the Bible says. Cast in all your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your pains, all your problems. Cast them upon him. First of all, five, seven, for he cares for you. How many of us cast our problems on God and leave them there? We cast them there, then you worry about them, worry about them the more. You cast them there on Jesus, and then say, Oh, Jesus, give me back. Give me back. Huh? When you worry, you are just taking them back from Jesus. If you cast them there, leave them there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He bore your sicknesses. Let's long transition. Surely our sicknesses have he borne, and our pains have he carried them. Hallelujah. And that's our mission of only our diseases did he bear himself. Our pains he carried, Dr. Isaac Lisa, another great Hebrew scholar. But only our diseases did he bear himself. Our pains he carried. Wow. Praise the Lord. We continue in part two. Hallelujah. Galatians 3, verse 13. Galatians 3, verse 13. It says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Whoa. Know that. Christ himself hath Redeem the stop. No, it doesn't say that he is going to redeem us. It says he has is a completed action. Christ has is already done, is already settled. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. I don't understand this thing about Christians. You know, how um, many generational curses are a curse? A Christian can be cursed. You can't be cursed, right? The best way to curse. No more than a Christian be cursed. The problem with Christian, Christians uh, is ignorance, not knowing. Yeah, and I'm going to come back there. Christ has redeemed us. He has redeemed us. He has redeemed us from the curse of the law. What? That the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Amen. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Hallelujah. Christ redeemed us so that we might be blessed. Thank God Paul said he thank God for all his blessings with all spiritual blessings and heavenly blessings. Christ has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. You can't be blessed at first. You can't be blessed at first. That's true. Hallelujah. The Greek word exagorazo, translated redeem, comes from the verb which means to buy up. 
or to buy you back. That is a ransom to rescue from loss, figuratively, that's what it means. So Christ has redeemed us, he has bought us back, he has rescued us from the curse of the law. This is what Christ did on the cross. He rescued us, he redeemed us, he bought us back from the curse of the law, being it a curse for us. Christ took our place on that cross. We were supposed to be on that cross. It's not that, it's not that we're estranged from God. We were estranged from God. We were separated from God. We were cursed. The submission of the law was for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says for the means of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. All of us were supposed to be on that cross hanging. In other words, all of us were condemned to die. But Jesus Christ became a curse for us. He took upon himself our sin, our sicknesses and our diseases, and he paid the price. He fulfilled the just requirements. He fulfilled the just demands of God. And he paid the price. He shed his blood for our sin. But he said life is in the blood. Man said against God, so man was supposed to shed his blood. Man was supposed to die. But Christ took our place. He shed his blood on the cross. He became the curse for us. So that we might be free from the curse, we can redeem, we can ransom, we can rescued from the curse of the law. So how can you be cursed? People try to break generation curses over Christians. No, the problem with the Christians is ignorance. We suffer for a lack of knowledge. If you put a baby on top of this roof, and the baby is could, could crawl around, and there are no boundaries. Despite the fact that he does not know what it is to fear, uh, despite the fact that he does not know uh, danger, <laughs> despite the fact that he's innocent, if he crawls off this building, what's going to happen? And he lands on the ground, what's going to happen? If he crawls off the, 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 seat, the, uh, the roof, what's going to happen? He's going to die. Because he's ignorant, that doesn't mean that he's he, he, uh, unless God intervenes. As long as gravity is doing its job, he's going to be pulled right down to the ground, he's going to die, he's going to break his neck or break some part of his body. Huh? He's ignorant! My ignorance is no excuse. The problem with Christians is that they're ignorant of who they are in Christ, of their rights. If the government general were to go to prison, go, uh, or, sorry, if the government general were to instruct the warden, through whatever means that he has to go through, to set free all prisoners. The warden can go up to the prison and open every prison door. I said, I said to the prisoners, the government general says that you are free. But school man does not understand. Huh? Just you get enough, the government says you are free. According to the government general's word, you are free. But a prisoner can say, I'm in prison, and say, I'm in prison, and in prison, and in prison. Yes, you're in prison. Why are you in prison? Because you're ignorant. You're ignorant. You don't know. And that's why it's good for Christians to sit on the teaching, good teaching that enlightens you. Let me let this preaching to get us on an emotional high. Every time God for preaching, we need to be stirred. We, need, you know, we love it, but, but, but we need to be taught the word of God. So you can stand against the enemy. Christ has redeemed you. He has paid the price. He became a curse for you so that you would not have to be cursed. So therefore, as long as you are enlightened, you can shake whatever in the devil brings you away. Hallelujah. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. What was the curse of the law? Let's see what the curse of the law was. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 to 22. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So from breaking the law, you came under the curse. The curse came when you broke God's law. But says, Christ has redeemed us from what? The curse of the law. So what is the curse of the law? What it says, what? What is the curse of the law? Let's see. Curse shall not be in the city. Curse shall not be in the field. The life is cursed. Curse shall be thy basket and 
my store has what? Poverty. Huh? So what? Curse of the law with poverty. Curse out the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land and the beasts of thy kind, the flocks of thy sheep, poverty. Curse out thee, thou let the window come in, and curse out thou the men thou goest out. You can see right there that the law fellowship with God, the curse of the flesh of God, so we can add spiritual death. This means separation from God. So spiritual death, poverty. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou send with thy hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed, until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. The Lord shall let the pestilence, to disease there, pestilence, cleave unto thee, until he hath consumed thee from all the of all the land, whether thou goest to possess it, the Lord shall smite thee with consumption, with a fever, and with an inflammation, and with an extreme burden, with the sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Because you want me to again, verse 61, now, and also every sickness, and every plague which is now written in the book of the law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. In other words, Every sickness that, that they don't even know about, that shall even come into existence. He says, The Lord shall bring upon thee, of course, bring upon thee God's army sickness in heaven. Every good gift, but every perfect gift comes down from above, from the Father, bless him, whom we go. Remember, what it means is that when you step under his umbrella, you become exposed. That's all that we need. Not that God literally going to put a disease on anybody, but there's no disease in heaven. All right? But God's laws were like. Uh, Umbrella, protection, wisdom, for under the law, the enemy attacks, the attacks. Alright? So, see what the curse of the law was? No relationship with God. It's the separation from God. Alright? Secondly, poverty. Thirdly, sickness and disease. Well, they have a series of redeemed from the curse of poverty. Alright, but that's not a topic today. We're dealing with sickness and disease. So it says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Christ hath redeemed us from spiritual death. That's what um, Ephesians said. And you have he quickly are made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. We were not physically dead, but we were dead in trespasses and sin. We were dead in trespasses and sin. Because of sin, we were dead. We were separated from God spiritually. That's spiritual death. But it says, and you have he quickly, you who you, you have been made alive. You have been made alive. So we were dead, but we were made alive. So those who are Christians are no longer spiritually dead. Hallelujah. Christ has redeemed us from spiritual death. He's also redeemed us from poverty. Amen. Hallelujah. He redeemed us from poverty. We don't, we don't have to be poor. And poor and being rich does not necessarily mean we are near. Rich means having an abundant supply, having your needs met, living, living good, living, living well. All right. We don't have to be poor. Christ has redeemed us from poverty because He is He's our provider. God is the general, our provider. But I said I have a series on that uh, redeemed from uh, redeemed from the curse of poverty. All right. But we're talking about sickness and disease. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Christ has redeemed us from sickness and disease. Christ has bought us back. He has bought us up. He has ransomed us. He has ransomed for us. That we may be free from sickness and disease. Do you understand what Christ went through? So that you live a healthy life? So you walk in divine health? So that you'll be healed and the devil attack your body? Do you understand all those things that don't let it in vain? Come on. Rise up and take what belongs to you. Healing is the children's bread. Healing belongs to you. Amen. And apply the word, appropriate the word. Yeah. And the devil attacks you, get the devil up. Christ paid the price for my healing. And I accept it. I believe it. And that settles it. It's already a fact. By his stripes, I am healed. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to apply the word. That's how we true. Hallelujah. Let's talk about spiritual death. That the curse of the law was spiritual death separated from God. Hebrews 2, verse 1 to 6. Poverty, sickness, and disease. Hallelujah. Christ had redeemed us, bought us back, paid the ransom for us from sin, poverty, sickness, and disease. One writer says, sickness and disease 
are the physical penalties of sin. I think that's Dr. Dr. Um, McGrosser, I think on Ethel Foster, said that sickness and disease are the physical penalties of sin. But Christ has borne in his body all the physical liabilities on account of sin, releasing our bodies judicially from sickness and disease. Let me read that again. Let me love that. Sickness and disease are the physical penalties of sin. Christ has borne in his body all the physical liabilities on account of sin, releasing our bodies judicially from sickness and disease. Disease. Wow. Oh my gosh. You want some of Christ has done? Hallelujah. But what is it? We have a what is it? Christians only believe the first part. Think that got me. What is it that Christians only believe the first part of the word? They don't just save us from our sins. He wants everybody saved. Huh? God says that every man to be saved. Witchcraft worker, devil, devil worshiper. I'm a young worshiper who are among the God wants everybody to be saved and come to know the truth. He's not willing that anybody perish but come all oh, come to repentance. Why we have a problem? We don't have a problem believing that. But we have a problem believing the, 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 the next part of the verse. It's one death. That death accomplished four things for us. Not only salvation, but healing. Oh, Lord, have mercy. As I said, by his stripes we are healed. His body was, his blood was shed for our sins. We repeat that again. His body was shed, his blood was shed for our sins. His body was beaten, battered, broken, bruised for our healing. Hallelujah. This is another couple of verses that we're going to be true. Matthew 8, verse 16 to 17, it says, Then the evil was come. They brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast up the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself, Christ, took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Matthew is looking back at what Isaiah said, what we just read. Christ just healed Peter's. Mother-in-law, of a sickness. And then he healed many other people that were around. And I was to say, this is the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy, saying Christ, or himself, took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. My Lord, have mercy. So you see that that refers to physical healing, but his mother was sick of a physical healing. Huh? And all those people that were healed from the sicknesses, but physical ailments. Hallelujah. Matthew did the words to refer to bodily ailments. Some people believe that Christ bore our sicknesses and carried our pains before he died on the cross because it says that it was fulfilled. The prophecy was fulfilled there, so Christ is no longer healed. It was fulfilled at that point. When Christ healed Peter's mother-in-law and, and, and one of them, right? That's not so. That's not so. Because Christ continued to heal when he was on earth. Hallelujah. That phrase, that it might be fulfilled, is still wrong there. That it might be fulfilled. Hallelujah. That word, that word really means it is the beginning of the fulfillment. The beginning of the fulfillment of the prophecy. This is what it literally means. The beginning of the fulfillment of the right. Everyone, everyone have a right interpretation. All right? Some of also believe that this prophecy was fulfilled in the day when our Lord healed the great multitude. That it was fulfilled three years before our Lord died on the cross. But that is not so. All right? The same word is used in Matthew 12, verse 14. The Pharisees went out. And had the council against him. Matthew 12, verse 40 21. The Pharisees went out and held the council against him, how they might destroy him. And when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from things, and the great multitude followed him, and he healed them all. 
and charge them that they would tell that they should not, sorry, and charge that they should not make him known. That when he fulfilled which was spoken by the said the prophet saying, Behold my servant who I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles, he shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the street, the bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flash shall he not quench, till the same forth judgment unto victory, and his name shall the Gentiles trust. Hmm. Wow. That might be fulfilled. The same word plural, uh, plural is used there. Oh, I am not a Greek scholar, so I think I'm saying this bad. Uh, forgive me, those of you who know Greek well. All right? This is the wonderful prediction you know, that was mentioned in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 4. Matthew was quoted from that prediction. All right? So Isaiah had predicted as Matthew was served that God would put forth his spirit upon Christ, that Christ would then declare judgment to the Gentiles. That Christ would be kind to every weakest of men, to the very weakest of men, for a bruised reed he shall not break in a spoken flax, he shall not quench in the kind of the weakest of men. That Christ will let her forth, all right, judgment unto victory, and this refers to the horrors of the tribulation period and whatever, all right, and to the time when Christ will come forth to destroy his enemies and set up his kingdom. And in his name shall the Gentiles fall. But Matthew, Matthew, Matthew asserts that the Gentile nation would yet hear the gospel and find hope in Christ, that how will Christ will for, for both judgment and victory, referring to his coming and then to destroy all his enemies. Here Matthew declares that this prophecy was then fulfilled even before the Gentiles had yet heard the gospel. The Gentiles didn't hear the gospel yet, but Matthew said that it would be fulfilled. But what we need to realize that in the Greek era sense, it that indicates momentary completed action. It's also used to express future events. It is used to express future events that must certainly happen. That must certainly happen. So do it something to do it not for something that already happened. And in God's mind is as though it has already happened. Jesus the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Don't you understand that we are that Jesus was crucified? And slain even before the world was created. That's the language of God. Alright? Jesus Christ wasn't literally crucified before the earth was, was formed. But in God's mind, it already happened. There's no time in God's work. In God's mind, it's already determined. It's destined to happen. Alright? So even though the prophet said that it might be fulfilled, it doesn't mean that that's the fulfillment and that's the end. Really, you should, you should determine that this is the beginning of the fulfillment of the prophecy. That's where the apostles heal. Hallelujah. So it's used to express future events that must certainly happen. Luke 14, verse 7 and 21 says, And they were delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah. When they opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he would not need to preach the gospel to the poor. He said to heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, to come to a sight of the blind. He said, I never them that are bruised. The priest that sent the care of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And, his, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began to say to them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. But was everything fulfilled then? Christ is still giving sight to the blind. He's still setting people at liberty, those that are bruised, or more than really those who have been enfeebled or broken down as the sick. Tree 
on the cross, that we may dead to sins shall live unto righteousness by whose stripes we what? Were healed. As I said, by the stripes we are. And he was looking back at, no, he's like, um, Matthew. See, yeah, sorry, Isaiah said, by the stripes we are healed. Matthew was looking back at Isaiah's prophecy. And that's it, by the stripes he are healed. Peter said, by the strength, by whose strength he are healed. What is Peter saying? That Christ already died on the cross. Christ already said, even though know, when Christ was on earth and he was and, and healing all those people, it said that this was the beginning of the fulfillment of the prophecy. But Christ didn't die yet. He didn't die for their sins yet. Huh? He didn't pay the price for their sins. He didn't pay the price. Um, that they will be healed from the same diseases. But yes, he was working miracles. But Peter knows that you're up at the cross and says, look, it's already completed, it's already done. Your redemption has already been purchased. You've already been redeemed from the curse of the law. It's done now, it's a settled fact. By who stretched you were healed. You were healed. But if you were healed, it means you are healed. And if you are healed, you act as though you are healed. Hallelujah. Which means you start getting people down in the chair. Huh? Yeah. Do your best to get up off that sick bed. Huh? Give me a touch of shoulder the first time. Huh? Huh? Give me a move a leg the second time. But you keep going at it by stretch so you keep going at it. Huh? Every day, huh? Every moment, huh? Try to get up off. Do your best to get up off that bed. You clear away by a stretch. I was here. I was here. Get the word into your spirit. When the word gets into your spirit, I'm going to teach you about that. How the word first enters your spirit and then once it's made into your body. God of you don't understand that. When God told Adam, the day you eat this fruit, you shall surely die. Adam didn't drop them dead. No. He died spiritually. It began in his spirit first. The spirit man died. He was separated from Christ. But then death work is spread from the spirit into the body. Let us eat in words is spread from your spirit. Into your body. You first believe it, the spirit believes it, the spirit receives the word, and then the body lines up with the spirit. And here, more picture put it this way. Um, I feel good, come on, the spirit. I feel fine, come on, the spirit. Body fall in line. That word body fall in line. My spirit is healthy, my spirit is whole, my spirit is holy. Body fall in line with my spirit. See, the body going to lay in the spirit. We're going to teach that um, in, a, in a future lesson for all we get the spirit in the body going to lay in the spirit. But here we begin the spirit. So you're going to be able to move a little hand today. Huh? But, but, but the more, as, you, as, you, as, you, as, you, as you confess the word and speak the word, you're going to move a foot. In no time you'll be off that day. Some of these are instant, some are gradual, but I think it's getting the word of God in your spirit. Believe that Jesus Christ paid the price for your sin and to redeem you from the curse of the Lord and redeem you from sickness and disease. Believe it, receive it, and I do it so. Appropriate it, confess it, speak it over your body. Hallelujah. The same for you, take your medication, take the word of God. Amen. Some people take the medication four times a day, three times a day, four times a day. When it comes to the word of God, I want to look all snap. No. Take the word as much as you take the meditation. Hallelujah. Apply the word of God. Imagine what it says, the God's word is medicine. We're going to look at that in the future. I study also, God's word is medicine to your body. So the same you take your medication morning, noon, and night. Take the word morning, noon, and night. Speak your seed and scriptures will be your body morning, noon, and night. And your body will look in your spirit. The word will get into your spirit, and your body will line up with your spirit, which contains the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By his stripes we are healed. That is two verse five. For good two, but first we got two verse five. By his stripes you were healed. Hallelujah. If the scripture says, "By whose stripes you were healed," then you are healed. Believe it. Receive it. Your healing is already bought and paid for. It is a settled fact. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you again for what Christ has accomplished for us on the cross. I believe that he died to save me from my sins. Thank God that I am saved. Thank God I am 
born again. Thank God we are free from sin. Thank God our sin shall not have dominion over us. We thank you, Lord. But we also believe that Christ died to heal us from our sicknesses and diseases. We believe it. We believe that the second fact. Hallelujah. All you have to do is to believe it and receive it. Hallelujah. And as you put your hands on that part of what is affecting you, as well as your head, hallelujah, tummy, your back, whatever it is, hallelujah, those of you who are hearing my voice, I'm going to put your hands on your body right now. I'm going to need God that an anointing would enter your body and break that yoke of sickness and disease, hallelujah, that ought not to be there, hallelujah. Uh, you accepted it, you receive it, but you're going to resist it right now in the name of Jesus. God has uh, dealt to every man a measure of faith, so you have a measure of faith. You have the measure of faith to resist this sickness and this disease. I don't care what it is, whether it is cancer, sugar, diabetes, high blood pressure. I don't care what it is. Hell of tumor. I love, hallelujah. I have seen God heal people of all manner of sicknesses and diseases. I've seen them in own two eyes, hallelujah. So I know what I am talking about. Oh, the word of God works. I remember when I was young in ministry. Hallelujah. Just started out in ministry. I was led to, I was invited to preach in a very small church. And I had 10 people that were locked. Hallelujah. But I had very few people there. Hallelujah. And I preached the word of God. and encouraged people to believe the word. To put the word of God first above anything else. Hallelujah. And preach for about 45 minutes to an hour. Hallelujah. And I give all of God. I said, look. Those who want to believe God for healing, just come right now in the name of Jesus. And one old lady came up. So I just came up to this. One old lady came up, and as I was going to lay hands upon her, she said, hold it right there. I will come for you to lay hands upon me. I sat and I listened intently to what you said. Hallelujah. You encouraged me to believe the word. Hallelujah. She said, look, I was blind in one eye. And this woman was about 75 to 80 years old. She said, I was blind in one eye. And my, my, my church colleagues were, uh, my brothers and sisters in church were encouraging me to go and let the doctor do this and let the doctor do that. I said, no, 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 I am not going. But she said, well, you were preaching, I believe the word. And I sat in my seat and I applied the word. God opened my blind eye and now I can see. Hallelujah. I want to tell you the word of God works. It works. I know it works. Amen. Hallelujah. But you want to believe Hallelujah. By your stripes, we're healed. 